Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have been talking on the subject of deliverance, and I thought uh, maybe I should uh, talk about the issue of manifestations. Many times, um, this ministry of deliverance is um, criticized because of the manifestations that usually accompany it. I've heard people mocking the fact that, uh, you know, people throw up during deliverance. You know, like you make people uh, to throw up. But I wanted us to look at this from the Bible and see whether there is anything in the Bible that can address that kind of criticism. There's a story here in Luke chapter 9 um, of a man whose son was uh, tormented by a spirit. In verse 38, uh, he, this man comes to Jesus and he says, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son, for he is my only son. A spirit seizes him and he suddenly screams. It throws him into convulsions so that he foams at the mouth. You know, this is how this particular spirit manifests itself. It, it makes him uh, have foam or things coming out of his mouth, which can, which can be very disgusting. It says, it scarcely ever leaves him and is destroying him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not. Of course, Jesus was rebuking the disciples for not having faith there. And he says, bring your son here. In verse 42, even while the boy was coming, the demon threw him to the ground in a convulsion. But Jesus rebuked the impure spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And they were all amazed at the greatness of, of God. So what we see here is that uh, when you are praying for somebody and they have an evil spirit, you can never really control how they are going to manifest. And sometimes... Uh, there are convulsions, as you see there, they roll on the ground, and sometimes they throw up. And it is all in the Bible. We see all of these things uh, happening. And so if we are too concerned about how a person manifests before they are delivered, we may miss what God wants to do in bringing freedom uh, to, to, that, to that person. Of course, there have been some wrong things that have been done uh, in those who claim to do uh, deliverance where the dignity of the person has not been respected. Uh, uh, people will be rolling on the ground and their clothes will be, you know, off. And uh, I mean, one of the shocking things that I saw many, many years ago when this whole deliverance thing came, uh, became too known was uh, a woman who was said to have had a, a, her, her pregnancy longer than nine months. And so the, the deliverance pastor prayed for them and they started giving birth right there in public, in the church. And the video guys were just taking everything. I mean, uh, that is just not right. The dignity of the person is not respected. And so when we, we ministers um, are not careful on how we do things, that's where we, we will bring, you know, our ministry in disrepute. And I think uh, as ministers, sometimes we have to instruct our media guys to say, look, if... There are things like that happening. We need to make sure that we zoom out, we face somewhere else. Uh, it's okay when somebody gives a testimony of what the Lord has done, but to take a, a live video of somebody giving birth, and that child one day will grow up, and they will see uh, these things, and how will they feel about their own mother, uh, you know, with everyone seeing them in public. We need to think about these things, and that's where uh, sometimes I think we go wrong. Uh, as much as possible, I think deliverance uh, must be done in private for the, the sake of uh, the dignity of the person. And so let, let's, let's not um, throw everything away because some people have acted irresponsible in some of these things. May the Lord bless you. We'll talk more about this tomorrow. God bless you.